Well, hello, Faith Harvest Fellowship. Welcome today. I want to thank you for coming, those of you that are here in person and those of you that are viewing us live stream. We want to invite you to uh, yield your hearts to the Spirit today. The Scripture says, by the hearing of the Word of God, your faith will grow. So I'm believing that your faith is going to grow today. Let's start off with asking the Lord to bless our tithes and our offerings. Uh, if you are viewing us from live stream, you can give by going to givelify.com. Faith Harvest Fellowship. We do covet your donations and your offerings and your tithing. Uh, it helps us keep the uh, ministry going. helps us to fuel the gospel from here, right from Orville, Ohio. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that guides us through everything that we go through. And I just want to ask you, Lord, to bless those that are giving today. And bless these offerings and let them be like the loaves and the fishes, Lord. Let it multiply so that we could uh, be good stewards with it and so and use it for your kingdom to advance your will in the earth. And we thank you for it, Lord God. Bless the hearing and the reading of your word today that it will empower us to advance the kingdom and to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to start this program with reminding you again, and many will say, you say that all the time, I will say this until the Lord raptures me home, because we need to be reminded about it, especially in our culture today. We have a culture that is an anti-Christ charged culture, and that which is of God in Christ is not tolerated, and in many places, we don't hear it even in the church of the life that we need to be living. But you have two purposes in life. The overhanging purposes and the overall goal that God has for you and me. When he created Adam and Eve, this was their purpose. And when uh, uh, he created us, before he put us in our mother's womb, according to the Psalms 139, he instilled this in us, and these are the two purposes. This is what the will of God is for your life. If you've been wondering what the will of God is for your life, stop looking and listen to me now. You have a personal will, and then you have a corporate will that God has purposed for you. And the first is this, that your life in every shape and form, in every stage of growth in your life, from the time that you an infant all the way up until the time that the Lord takes you home, your main purpose in life is to glorify God. And you glorify God by bearing His image in every phase of your life, every facet of the, uh, uh, the community and the culture that you go into. Every one of us have ability to influence people. We are influencers. You're influencing somebody around you in some way. We were designed by God to influence our culture and take dominion, to influence not just uh, the human race, but the whole earth. He said, I give you dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and beasts of the field, and that take dominion. This is what he said man's job was to do is to go and glorify God. When we go in to these regions in our life, we go in to our workplace, we go in, we are a minister. And I was reminded today with the earlier program that I was doing, Reverend Beth, and her scripture the Lord gave her this morning was in Timothy. And it says that for we are all been made ministers of the gospel. Well, how do we minister the gospel. We're not, he, she's not talking about everybody's supposed to have a church and preach at a church. Paul was saying to Timothy, everyone that you come in contact with, your purpose is to minister the glory of God so that God will get glory. How do we do that? I want to show you this verse here. This verse really stuck out at me this morning and I really uh, was in char I was charged by it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3, or chapter 3, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, and it says, And we with all, all of us with veiled faces, unveiled faces, behold as a glass in a mirror. In other words, we, none of us now, all of us that are serving the Lord, this is what Paul's saying, Corinthians, all of us 
we are not veiled. This is not hidden from us now. We can all see this clearly by looking in the mirror. What the mirror? The Word of God is many times referred to as the mirror of our, our spiritual uh, being. We look into the mirror with unveiled faces, without any barriers now, without any filters. The Word of God reveals Christ to us without any feature, uh, filters because, let me show you what. It says, as in a mirror, what is He revealing? What do we see in the Word of God? What is God trying to reveal to us and expose us to? It says, the glory of the Lord. That's what He is exposing us to. Why? It goes on. It says, we are so that we can be transformed. Transformed what? Into that glory. It says, transformed into the same image of that glory. You see, we, the glory of God, changes the old nature and the old image of each one of us so that we can take the image of God, the image of the Lord, the glory of the Lord into wherever we go in our culture. Wherever you're working, you are called to take Christ into your workplace. If you're going into your workplace and you, people in there and the culture around us, you know, uh, uh, like when uh, COVID was going on. People were walking in fear. Those of us that are bearing the glory of God and the image of God, we're not giving and casting an image of panicking or being afraid and, and being fearful and consumed with fear. We are walking in faith. We are walking in the hope. That is the glory of God. That people look at us and say, well, why aren't you responding like we're responding like everybody else is responding because we have the hope of his promise. We have his glory. And we know that the scripture says all bad things are going to work to our good. I don't know about you, but it's going to work to my good. That's what the word said. But this word basically tells us that God is transforming us every day into the glory into the image, so that His glory, His image, not anybody else's image, into the image of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord, it says that He was the first chapter of, uh, of uh, Hebrews and the second chapter of Colossians says this. It says that Christ was the exact image of the invisible God. One says the exact expression of the invisible God. Jesus Christ bore the exact image of God the Father. We are being transformed into that image of the Lord so that the glory of the Lord, when we go into these dark places of life, we go into the dark places, uh, our workplace. In our culture today, unfortunately, God, Jesus Christ, is not tolerated in our government anymore. Jesus is not tolerated anymore in our schools. Jesus is not tolerated in our media, in, in, in uh, television, uh, in Hollywood, uh, in our music anymore. Jesus is not tolerated uh, anymore in the hospitals. Jesus, you see, regardless of where the world will tolerate Christ or not, we're still called to go into it. If that's the case, and all of the seven mountains of influence or the seven pillars of every society will not tolerate Christ's image anymore, then guess what that makes that place? A dark place. It's a dark place. But the scripture says, you and I, we have been given the light. We are to be the light of the world. It says in the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was, was God and the same was with God in the beginning. And everything that was made was made by Him and nothing you see was made by itself. It says, and in Him was life and in His life was the light of man and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness couldn't comprehend it. And then it goes on to tell us what the Word is. It says, and the Word became flesh 
and dwelt among men, and we beheld his glory as the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ was the Word. He came in the flesh, and he glorified God by bearing the image of the invisible God in this life. This verse that I just read to you, as, as I, in this discipling class today, you must get this in your spirit, that you are being transformed into uh, the, the image of the invisible God so that God will get glory out of your life wherever you go in the dark places, into the workplaces, into wherever it is that you're going, you're taking the light of God. Now, Understand something. You don't have to do this by yourself. Don't be afraid that this is something that you, you're going to be alone in. Because the scripture says there, we are transformed not by our own abilities, not by what we're doing, but by the Spirit of God inside of us. What we're doing by allowing the Spirit to do this in our lives, basically, will, will transform us. How does, what does that look like? Well, let me tell you what it looks like. Let me show you what this looks like by it, where it says, by being led by the Holy Spirit, being transformed into the image of God by the Holy Spirit. Meaning the Holy Spirit is leading us through things through our life that as we go through them, we are being transformed. Let me show you what that looks like. If you jump over real quick to Luke chapter 1. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 1. There's two verses in there that I want to point out. Verse 1 and verse 14. Verse 1 basically says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned back from Jerusalem and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Some would say Jesus was led into a garden. Jesus was led into a nice peaceful place. It doesn't say that. It says he was led into the wilderness. Oh, my goodness. This is going to shed light on something that's going to terrify some of you. Some of you got to realize that the desert that you're in, that uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit took you there. <laughs> Why? Because of what I just read. The transformation does not take place upon the mountain where everything is blooming and all everything, the plush, uh, uh, the, uh, the plush vegetation and in the sunshine all the time and everything's going good. Listen, the transformation takes place in the wildernesses of our lives, takes place in the hard times of our lives, takes place through the trials of our life. Jesus gives us a view. He gives us a, a, a quick picture of how this transformation takes place. Basically, it goes through this, and I'm not going to read it all or quote it all, but for the interest of time, but it goes on and it says, for 40 days he was tempted. The first temptation that the devil came to Jesus with questioned his identity. You're going to be questioned in these trials. You're going to be questioned going through uh, these wilderness about are you really the child of God? Will he really come to your rescue? Are you really his child and are you going to hold on to him or are you really a fake? These wildernesses will try us all. Jesus was tried and it basically said, if you're a son of man who you say you are, basically are the son of God, I know you're hungry. Why don't you take these rocks and turn them into bread? Because you're supposed to be the man of God. You do all of these uh, miracles. You're the son of God. And it says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then it says, basically, the devil went on. Now, we're not told how this is drawn out through the 40 days, what, how, how often these three happen. We're just told about these three temptations. But the second temptation is, is really, uh, uh, it's uh, eye-opening. The devil says, and the, uh, or the word says that the devil took Jesus upon the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment, in a twinkling of time. And it says, and the devil said this, he said to him, all of this authority, that's interesting. That authority didn't belong to him in the beginning. It belonged to you and me. We lost it when Adam and Eve fell to sin. Jesus said in the Genesis, it says, 
Let us make man in our own image and let us give him, make him male and female and let us give them dominion over the fish of the earth, the fowl of the air and the beast of the field and let us give them dominion over the works of all of our hands. Everything that God ever created here, the authority over it was given to you and me. That's what we lost in the Garden of Eden. The devil is actually saying to Jesus, I know you came back to get that, glow, that, that authority back. Well, let's just take a shortcut. You don't need to go through all of the, the dying and the crucifixion that the prophets prophesied uh, that, you know, uh, you would uh, hang on a cross and you would be uh, uh, persecuted, mocked, and uh, like what it says in Isaiah 53, you know, you won't be led to the slaughter like a lamb. You know, uh, let's, just, uh, let's just avoid all of that. You can go to a quick uh, 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 shooting forward in it and avoiding all of that. All you got to do is worship me. That's what the devil said. Why? Because he said there, I will give you and I will give you this and the glory of all of these things. The devil basically, that's what he's doing right now to people today. People in Hollywood. People with gifts, talents, many times. They say, hey, if you use those things for me, I'll give you everything. And the, the truth is, many of them have come wealthy and wealthy. They've left the kingdom. All of the gifts that were given to us as in a relationship of entertainment were given to us for the kingdom of God, not for our own pleasures. But the devil offered it to them. They took a quick uh, shortcut to get that authority. He offered it to Jesus. Jesus was tempted like you and me. But Jesus said, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. In other words, get out of my way. Get behind me. It tells us because, for it is written. This is what we must always go back to is what is written. What was written when I told you, we see that the Spirit of the Lord is transforming us as He takes us through these wilderness so that we would bear the image of Christ. Once we bear the image of Christ to those around us, God is glorified. Jesus stood and said, you shall worship the Lord your God and Him only shall we serve. It is written and that's what the Word says. He always went back to the Word. But I want to point this out before my time runs out here. You know, he did have another uh, uh, temptation, the other uh, the other temptation was basically, you know, if you are the son of God, you know, just the Bible says that angels are in charge of you. You can't hurt yourself. Uh, uh, you know, you won't, you'll never die. You're not going to die. You know, he was questioning his destiny. Jesus knew what he was going to have to do. He knew that he was going to have to die on a cross. You know, he said, if you're who you say you are, throw yourself off of this cliff. Throw yourself off of this pinnacle of the temple. And your angels will protect you. And Jesus basically says again, it's written. He says, this is what has been said. It's written. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. But here's the verse I want to point out to you before my time runs out. It's in verse 14. Then Jesus returned. This is, this is after the temptation. This is after he went through this. It says, then Jesus returned. Look at how he returned. He goes into the wilderness being filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning that he was baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. But that did not mean that he knew how to use it. That didn't mean that he was walking in the fullness of it. It wasn't until he came out of the wilderness that we read this. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He went in with the Spirit of God living in him, being filled. But that power was not manifested. That power was not nurtured. It was not cultivated until he went through the desert, the wilderness, the dry place, the trials, the testings of our life. It says, then he came out in the power of of the Holy Spirit. That verse I read to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that's, he came out, this right here. He was transformed. 
How do we know he's transformed? Now he came out in the power. That transformation took place in this 40 days of his testing and trying. Your temptation. This is the Holy Ghost in action. We've seen in Jesus' life, the way that Jesus overcame this was the empowerment of God through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit led him. That's what it says in Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 Corinthians, that it was the Spirit that leads us. We see it, the way that we see it is what's in the Word. Jesus said what, you, what, what uh, the Word says there, Paul said there, that this mirror, we read this with a clear vision and a, without any filters, that what we see God did for Jesus in this life, looking in this mirror, we're looking in this mirror, and what we've seen, the glory that we saw in this, this is the glory of the Lord, of what the Holy Spirit did in Jesus' life. It says, that glory is being transformed into you. I am being transformed in the same way that Jesus was transformed in this story. I'm reading in the mirror right here, in that uh, Corinthians. Because I see this, I draw strength and know, and I can look back, and I shared a little bit of this testimony. Uh, uh, and this is what the Holy Ghost in action looks like. This is what the Holy Ghost in our lives looks like on a personal level. I've shared with you many times, and we did a program earlier today called Holy Ghost in Action, and I shared a little bit of this with them. And, uh, but this is what our personal lives look like. I've ministered and shared with you many times of what our corporate uh, life should look like with the Holy Spirit working through us with this power, with us bearing the image of Christ, the glory of God, God's going to receive glory in our lives, but we can help advance the kingdom by allowing the Holy Spirit the use of our lives to use these power gifts to impact other people's lives. And I've shared that with you. Well, I want to share that these same gifts will also empower you on your personal life to be an overcomer and to be transformed. It empowers us. You know, and I shared a little bit, and I don't know if I've got enough time to share it uh, uh, with you uh, here right now. But basically what happened was in this, uh, what we see is uh, uh, back in December, my wife, Peggy, Miss Peggy, uh, just about died. And uh, it's a long story, and I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but I was told by one of the doctors that with her clinicals, he'd never seen anyone with her kind of numbers ever pull through this. And he said, I just want to be very clear with you how serious this is. And he said, we're going to do everything we can do, but we have to find an antibiotic that will uh, back this out. And she went in there with a 60 over 40 blood pressure. They couldn't get it up to, they got it up to 80 over 40 and was not able to get it up until after they, they had to do emergency surgery. It's a long story. But anyway, uh, she, they were able to get it up by using, you know, after the surgery, put her in the ICU ward, and they used medicines to get it up. But they had to get this, uh, this uh, septus, this infection, that went through her blood and every organ in her body that was killing her and, and uh, had to find something that would stop it. And I told him that day, it was on a Monday, I said, listen, I said, uh, I understand what you're saying and I appreciate your honesty. I said, but she will recover. And I said, you do everything that you know to do. And I said, and I'm going to leave the rest of it to the Lord. But I tell you, she will recover. And he said, I believe you. And then he walks out of the room. I went home that night. When I went home that night, let me show you the Holy Spirit. You see, I went into the desert place that night. <laughs> I, she was unconscious. She didn't know what was going on. We had been led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Listen, sometimes it looks like God has set us up. He didn't set us up for a failure. He set us up for a breakthrough. You've been set up for a breakthrough. You know, a, moving up to a higher level, a greater a, a, a presence of God. You know, so stop looking at the wilderness. Jesus had a breakthrough. He, when he came out of the wilderness, he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. I went in the wilderness that night. 
I went into the wilderness and I got home and, and I tell you, I'm human and I felt the fear. I felt like cowarding down and, and, and woe is me and Lord, what am I going to do without her? I need her and all of this. But that supernatural faith that was in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it began to operate and move in my life, energized me. And then I remembered what was written. You see, the discerning of the Spirit quickened my spirit and said, no, Jerry, this is not a dying opportunity in the flesh. This is a living opportunity in the Spirit. He said, uh, uh, I was able to discern that this was a test and trial. This was the devil's plunder. I knew the devil was trying to kill us. I went back to what was written, and I remembered and rem was reminded by the Holy Spirit. The Lord, Holy Spirit gave me personally the word of knowledge of uh, so many prophetic prophecies that God had given me through his word that he backed up with his word that had not been fulfilled yet about her and I. I knew that her and I, the Lord said, no, you will do this together. And I said, Lord, I know that we all got to die sometime, but I've gone through your word for what was written. I went back to the prophetic words that, I, that, that, that you showed me and was backed up by scripture of what her and I were going to do. And it was written. And what is happening now is not what was written. And I refuse to let this spirit of death take her. What the devil is trying to do is illegal. What was happening, people, what you see here is the Holy Ghost in action. The Holy Ghost empowering me, encouraging me not to cower down. Listen, I'm a preacher, but, and I'm anointed, maybe anointed to speak it to you, but I'm no more anointed to live it than you are. I had to live this with the same things you had to live it with. You know, faith. The word of God and what is written. And he said what is written has not been fulfilled yet in her in my life. So she ain't dying. She shall live and not die. I picked up my guitar and I began to worship the Lord. And I sung this song. This is what happened in me in the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the wilderness. When fear was all around and the devil was tempting me, I felt the touch of hands so kind and tender. I sang that. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me in paths that I must trod. You see, there are hard times that sometimes we must go through. You're not going to be delivered out of everything all the time. There's times that we've got to go through the hard time. Jesus had to go through the wilderness for 40 days. He had to go through the trying of his life. These were the trying, took him to the nth degree of his temptations. But through it all, it says, so I sung the song. So let the storms rage high. Let the uh, uh, clouds, let them rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered in the, in the arms of God. He walks with me, and not on earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. I sang that all night long. And I'm watching, I'm sheltered. The Holy Spirit, in the same way the Holy Spirit sheltered Jesus in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit is leading me. He's leading him, sheltering him, guiding him through this temptation. And he overcame them with that authority and with these gifts operating in his life. That's what Holy Ghost in action looks like. And then I was able to strengthen myself. And I was able to stand. And I'm singing in the room all by myself. The lights were off. And I'm standing out worshiping God. Tears running down my eyes. Not tears of panic, but tears of joy. <laughs> Nothing on earth shall harm me. It is written and I know she's going to live. She's not going to die. I want to encourage you today. That's what the Holy Spirit will do in your life. He is transforming you. Going back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, look into the Word of God. Find what is written. The Scripture says there are no filters to hold you back now. 
the Holy Spirit, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what is written. And you stand on what is written. And don't be afraid of the storm. Don't be afraid of the rain. Don't be afraid of the wilderness. Don't be afraid of the dry place. Don't be afraid of the trials and the testings. We're going through many in our culture today. But we're sheltered in the arms of God. And the, by the Holy Spirit, it says, being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is doing the transforming in our lives. How is the transforming? How is he doing that? By holding our hand, reminding us of the word, encouraging us with these gifts, uh, uh, empowering us with these gifts. He's transforming us as he's walking us through the 40 days of temptation in your life. Maybe yours has gone on more than 40 days. Well, the scripture says to the Old Testament prophets, many of them had to hold on to faith even up to the death. You see, your life is eternal. You're not just 4,800 years or 80 years or 70 years here. You're an eternal creature. You've got a purpose beyond this life. And when you leave this world, you're going to fulfill your destiny. I want to encourage you today. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of being led by the Holy Spirit. God got us through that. Miss Peggy is alive and well today. If she has a story to tell, I've got a story to tell. And I'm telling you today that I'm here to witness that God is faithful. The Holy Spirit led me through it. And that's what the Holy Spirit looks like when he's working in our lives and he's in action. Thank you for joining. Be an evangelist. Let the Lord use you today. How? Take this program and just share it on your Facebook. Just share it on your Facebook. It'll go to all of your friends and it will encourage them in this time. I guarantee you, that is how you glorify God. That's bearing the image of God. It says, help advance the kingdom. That's how you can advance the kingdom. You don't have to preach the word. I just preached it. The Holy Spirit just used me to speak it to you. Now, you advance the kingdom by sending it to your Facebook. Share it today. Hit a like on there. Let everybody know that you're bearing the image of Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word, and I pray that you infuse it in our hearts and our minds, and that, Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice today be empowered by faith and let their faith grow, that they can be this transformation and bear your image and glorify you to help advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.